Hi there. Today we will build our own media server for free to watch movies and access files from any device in our network. It's like our own network drive and our own Netflix. If you have an old laptop lying around, you can use that laptop to make this media server completely free of cost. We will use Ubuntu to do our setup. Make sure to download Ubuntu Server ISO image from Ubuntu website and you've created your bootable USB. If you don't have a spare USB, you can use your existing USB to store multiple ISO files to boot. Check the link in the description on how to do so. Installing Ubuntu Server is pretty straightforward. You need to follow the on-screen instructions to proceed with the installation. But, here we need to change one setting, that is to uncheck the option, set up this disk as an LVM group. If you are curious on why we need to disable the option, click on the link in the description to see more details about it. Here we will enable the option to install OpenSSH server, so we can access our home server from any device on the network. Now our Ubuntu system is up and ready for further setup. After completing the installation, you should assign a static IP address to your computer on the network. This ensures that you always know the address for connecting over SSH and allows you to port forward services later. It's best to configure this in your router's DHCP settings rather than in your server's network configuration. This avoids future issues if you upgrade or change your network or if other devices start using the IP address you manually set. The setup process varies for each router. Access your router's web interface and navigate to the local network and DHCP sections. Look for an option related to static leases. Find your server's MAC address, which can usually be found in a menu or list of connected devices, and assign a static IP. After applying these changes, you may need to reconnect your machine to the Ethernet connection or restart it to ensure it gets the new IP address. Now that you have assigned static IP address to your server, you can now remotely access your server from any machine in the same network. Use the command ssh space your username at your server's IP address and press enter. It will ask for a password. When you are connecting from a new device, it will prompt you SSH fingerprint message, and you will need to type yes and then enter and you're good to go. Now, we will configure Samba. Samba is an open source implementation of the SMB profile, a Microsoft standard for accessing files over a network. SMB provides a native experience on Windows, almost like a USB hard drive, and has good support on macOS, Linux, iOS, and through third-party apps on Android. To install Samba, type the command sudo apt install Samba. If you're using any Arch-based or Fedora-based distro, use the distro-specific command to install Samba. Now, we will need to make the mount directory where we will mount the hard drive, and we will give permissions to it. This is useful if you are using any second hard disk or an external storage device to store all your files. If you have only one hard drive, you can skip this part and use the path of your shared folder which you want to use. I have already made a video on how to auto-mount all your hard drives to specific path. Open the link in the description to check that out. Now, we need to configure Samba so that it can locate our folder. Edit the file smb.conf inside, slash etc, slash Samba directory, and scroll right to the bottom. Now add the text I have highlighted in the screen. You need to write your shared path in the path parameter here. Now, scroll up a bit and change the option, map to guest to never. This will make sure only authorized users will be able to access the files. Make these changes and save the file. 
Now, we will set up a password for the user to access Samba. Use the command sudo smb passwd hyphen a username to set the password. To make the changes reflect, restart the Samba service by typing sudo system ctl restart smbd. You can now access the shared folder from your laptop or desktop by mapping a network drive, and then type your server IP followed by a slash, and then click on Browse. Then select the shared folder and click OK. The file should be now accessible like any other hard drive plugged into your computer. Now, to get our own movie server, we will use Jellyfin. Search for Jellyfin and follow the instruction written in the Jellyfin website to install Jellyfin for your distro. In our case, we will copy the command and run in the terminal to install Jellyfin. Jellyfin runs on port 8096 by default. Open your browser and type your server's IP address colon 8096 to access Jellyfin. You need to do your initial setup here. Create your username and password and add some movies to your library from here. Now after the initial setup is done, we are ready to go. You can now access your movie library from anywhere in your house like your mobile phone, tablet, smart TV, Amazon Fire Stick, etc. Download the Jellyfin app on your mobile and connect to your server IP. Make sure that your mobile is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your server. Congratulations! Now you have successfully set up your own media server. You are free to create your own unrestricted media library and watch on any of your device. That's it for today. Give a thumbs up to this video and share it with your friends if you found the content useful. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more contents like this in future. And as always, stay strong.